Today's message um, really stemmed from a thought that occurred to me about what it's like to be adopted into a new family and what that experience is really like, how you're trying to uh, fit into a new family dynamic while still having memories of the past and, uh, in a sense, being born into a new family by way of that adoption, right? And trying to reconcile feelings of rejection in this new family dynamic. Rejection, abandonment, all these things. I, I don't know if anyone here has, ever been a, is, has been adopted. But that's where this message came from. And um, the memories in this context being the past or the old man. The version of you that hasn't been born again. And as far as rejection, being redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ which has brought us near. So those are the things we're going to be dealing with by the grace of God. And quickly, I'd just like to start with the legal definition of adoption. So when a person is adopted, they legally become the child of their adoptive parents, meaning the birth parents relinquish all parental rights to the adoptive parents, and the adoptive parents gain full legal custody and responsibility of that child. So essentially creating a new permanent family dynamic where the adopted child is considered to be born into the new adoptive family. And this is usually finalized through a court order and reflected on the child's amended birth certificate. And we'll see as we go through the scriptures here, um, specifically Ephesians 1 and 2, the relevance of this. So we too... We're, we, um, we also legally became children of God. John 3, 5 through 8. So John chapter 3, we'll start at, uh, from verse 5, please. I'll give everybody a minute to turn there. Let me get an amen when we're all there so that we're all participating in the, in, the, in the word of God. John chapter 3. And just to give some context, you can go through this text in your, at your own time, but uh, there was a, Pharisee's, uh, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and he was having this dialogue with J the Lord Jesus about the new birth. So I'm going to start from verse 5. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit, that which is born of spirit is spirit. And the next text, I'm going to circle around here. It's going to make sense in a second. Let's go to John chapter 1, please. Go ahead and just keep your finger on that other chapter if you can. John chapter 1 from verses 12 through 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will, nor, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Each and every one of us are born of God. So when we truly come to Christ, we are born again, and we experience a spiritual rebirth through believing in Jesus. And this is not of blood, but praise God, we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is not of the will of the flesh, because again, in verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You are now born of the Spirit. 1 Peter 1.19, you don't have to turn there, but it says, but with, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, that's the significance of his blood, which purchased each and every one of us here. His blood is precious. His blood redeemed us. His blood transforms us. 
And, you know, often we read the scriptures and we may glance at the gene- genealogical records, like uh, if you open up to Matthew 1 and uh, skip through, you know, all the names of the lineage. But, you know, I, I, but you are now among that eternal lineage by faith, not by blood. You're now a part of this lineage. It, it, it extends beyond the text. We don't go beyond the text. We don't go beyond what is written, but it is implied that we're all a part of this family now. And that's the greater plan that the Lord wanted to reconcile us all to himself, whether you are Jew or Gentile. He brought us all together. And that's really what's at the heart of this message today. So being born again. Again, this is a spiritual rebirth. And, you know, as I was going through this and I was thinking about you know, it's, it's connection with being adopted. You know, we're, <laughs> we're born again into a new family, into a whole new family dynamic. Not of the will of blood, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, but of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, only Jesus can redeem mankind. Only Jesus can redeem you and I. He's the only one that was ever qualified and ever will be qualified to redeem us. And I'm still on the, on the, on the, on the area, on the subject of the legality of the whole adoption process and how we became who we are. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit now. Once you received him, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. If we could turn to Ephesians 1. We're still establishing the legal basis here, so follow me. We're going somewhere, church. We're going somewhere. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Again, that's Ephesians 1. Chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. Amen. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, praise the Lord. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You are a purchased possession. That's key. I want you to I want that to stick out. You are a purchased possession. That means your value. Your value is great. Your, your, your value is immeasurable to the Lord. You are purchased. He's already redeemed you. You belong to him. You are a purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So to the Lord, you are more precious than silver or gold. Diamonds of all the diamonds of the world couldn't couldn't quantify your value to him. In fact, once the Holy Spirit comes into you and takes up residence, your value goes up exponentially. You're more valuable than any other commodity of the world than anything ever. So don't ever let anybody devalue you. Don't let anyone ever devalue you. You are more precious to him than you will ever know. And on that day, we will have eternity to realize how precious we are and how precious he is first and foremost. Praise God. So I want to I I linger around this. That we're now purchased. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You don't belong to yourself. I don't belong to myself. Pastor doesn't belong to himself. We belong to Jesus. That is the transaction that took place. That is the that's that's why his blood is so precious. And his sacrifice, he sacrificed all for us to purchase us. Think about that. That's how valuable you are. I want you to walk out of here with that sense that you are so valuable. Not in not to be conceited, not to be proud, but that's that's who you are now. And you know, since since South Street, the thing that the Lord has always put in my heart is to really reinforce the identity of the Christian. And that identity starts with knowing who we are. 
So who we are now in this new family, we are now members of the household of God. Think about that for a minute. You're now a member of the household of God. And one day you'll sit at his table. <laughs> you'll sit at his table and we'll rejoice with him on that day. So there's nothing in this life that is worth compromising that for. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are precious to him. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Think about that. The Holy Spirit in you. So how do you treat yourself? How do you treat this body that he's given you? Do you just do what you want to do with this body? No, you can't anymore. Now you're governed by a whole new set of rules. Once you're adopted into this family, which each and every one of us are now adopted into this family. We, we can't just do whatever we want anymore. We were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are of God now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So adoption into the kingdom. If we could turn to Ephesians 4, Ephesians 1, chapter 1, 4 through 7. Thank you, Father, that we've been brought near by your precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 1, 4 through 7. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So remember, he chose you, not the other way around. He chose you. Again, going back to that value. He chose you. He chose me before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It was his will. It was his will, not our will. To the praise of his glory. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted. Now you're accepted. Now you're in your you're you're now in this new family dynamic, but know that you're accepted. Because some of us still have this this chip on our shoulder. Some of us are still dealing with abandonment and rejection, but the scriptures do not lie. Let every man be a liar and God be the only one who speaks the truth. You're now in Christ. You're now in Christ Jesus. So we rebuke every lie. I rebuke every form of rejection. I rebuke every word that has ever been levied against you, which made you feel as if you were rejected or you were dejected or you have less value. In the name of Jesus. So you're accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. We're forgiven. You're forgiven. Forgive yourself. That's another thing. Some of us haven't forgiven ourselves. Forgive yourself. That redemptive blood goes beyond forgiving others. It, forgive yourself as well. You haven't, you haven't taken hold of that, redemptive, of that redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Re forgive yourself. Stop being so hard on yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you redeemed us by your precious blood. So the Lord chose us in him, just as children who are adopted don't necessarily choose their parents. You know, we, we claim to love Jesus, but the truth is that we only have the capacity to love because according to 1 John chapter 4, we love him because he loved us first. So love was pouring out of him in that direction. And from him, we know we understand what true love is. We truly understand. That is the only way we can understand what true love is. From him, it all goes back to him. Everything in creation goes back to him. Everything does. Ephesians 2. So please, if we would turn to Ephesians 2. Verses 11 through 18. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made in the, hand, in the flesh by hands that at the time you were without Christ. There was a time in all of our lives that we were without Christ. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope without God in the world. Think about that. I know it's grim for some of us and I don't even want to take you back there. But in order to appreciate who you are now and where we stand now, where we are positioned with Christ in heavenly places. We can't appreciate that until we look at where we're coming from. It's a grim, dark picture. But praise God. Praise God. Verse 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You have been brought near. Turn to somebody and say, but now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, you've been brought near. We've been brought near. Praise the Lord. You're not far off anymore. You're not far off anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man, in himself. Everything is reconciled back into Jesus Christ, including us, including us. We are not separate from that. In himself, one new man from the two. Thus making peace, he made peace. Don't ever let anything disrupt your peace. Your peace is in Jesus Christ. Some of us are not experiencing that peace because we've, we're trying to establish, we're trying to establish the foundation of our peace in other things. In, uh, the, in the current state of my bank account, in, in, whether I have all the commodities of this life, whether I have a nice car, all of these things are fleeting. All of these things are shaky. All of these things are passing away. Let your peace be in Jesus Christ alone. Because what all these things are going to pass away. Everything, heaven and earth is going to pass away. He's the only one that's going to remain. And in him we have peace. So he's created peace for us, Lord. He's created peace for us. And that he might reconcile them both. I know this scripture is long, but we need every one of these words, precept by precept, word by word. We need this. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off. Oh, man. We were all far off. We were all far off. <laughs> We were all far off. We were dead in our sins. We were physically alive, but we were spiritually dead. We were spiritually dead. We thought we had something. We might have had nice clothes and nice cars, but we were dead without Christ Jesus. And that is the state of anyone that is outside of Christ. You are physically alive, but you're really dead. You're really dead. So come. Come and receive of his grace. And for through him, we both have access by one spirit to the father. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we have access now. He has separ He has broken down that middle wall of partition, of separation. He has taken away that enmity. We now have access to him. So how much more should that, should, should that just energize your prayer life and your desire to draw closer to him? Because you have access. You're not outside in the dark. You're not outside like you were in the dark. You have access to him now. You have access to the king of kings, the Lord of loads, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's who you have access to. So your prayer life, when you wake up in the morning, man, that should be the, pl the first place we're rushing to. Re I know, I know this. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I know, I know, but we've got to get over that. Because he's got so much for us. He's got so much he wants to pour into our lives. We have access. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
thank him because you have access because once we were in darkness we were without hope we were without him at one point at one point and once you've tasted and seen how can you ever go back and i know some of us struggle with things and but it's not worth it man none of that is worth it whatever is out there is not worth it it's not worth it. It may seem shiny. It may seem appealing for a season, but once you've tasted and seen of and, and tasted and seen his goodness in your life, how can you ever go back? How can you ever go back? There's no going back for us in Jesus' name. Amen. We will go from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And uh Ephesians two. We're still in Ephesians two. Uh verse nineteen through twenty two. 19 through 22. Thank you, Lord. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. <laughs> Praise God. We're no longer strangers. We're no longer foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. We're members of the household of God, y'all. That's who we are now. <laughs> You're a member of the household of God. Think about that. So, Listen, when you picture yourself in your life right now and you look around at the circumstances and you're looking around at the four walls and they don't they don't quite it doesn't look like a palace. It doesn't it doesn't look like who you who the scriptures say you are. Just know that you're you're a saint and you're a member of the household of God. So the problem is we, we keep picturing ourselves. We limit we limit ourselves because we only picture ourselves how we are right now. You've got to picture yourself as a member of the household of God. So in the household of God, you don't lack anything. In the household of God, nothing is, 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 is too far from you. In the household of God, you have access. In the household of God, he's given you everything. Praise God. Verse 20 says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple. You're growing into a holy temple. Going back to that, that rejection or, 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 or you know, you, you feeling like you're not worthy. You're being built up into a holy temple. That takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. You're being built up, y'all. Give yourself some time. You're growing into a holy temple in the Lord. That's who you are. Growth happens upward. It doesn't go downward. You can't, if you're down here, you can only go up. You're not going to go down. In whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Whew. There's so much here, yo. In whom you are also, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Praise God, he's patient with us. Thank you, Lord, that you're patient with me, that you're patient with each and every one of your children. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't often feel like a dwelling place for, of God in the spirit. You know, uh, I, I don't often feel like who I am is a place where the Holy Spirit would want to reside. But thank God he's patient. Thank God he, he's already gone into the future because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's, he's omnipresent. He's already seen who you are in the future, far ahead of who you see yourself as now. Who you are now is not who you are, truly. So give yourself some time and, and let him work in you, y'all. Let him work in you. Let him do the work in you. Let him build you up. He's here to build us up. He's here to help us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we are accepted in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are not a respecter of persons because we would all be disqualified. Thank you, Father, for your, Im your immeasurable grace and your mercy that you, that, that you have extended to each and every person on the earth, O Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for being so patient with us. Though we are broken, though we, we miss the mark, you're still patient with us. You're still there to, 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 to grab our hand and take us. Some of you just need to just take his hand and let him lead you. You just need to let him lead you. You need to stop relying on your own GPS. 
You need to just, you need to throw away that GPS and let the Holy Spirit lead you. You need to throw away that map, that agenda. You need to throw all that away and just let him lead you. Take him by the hand. Take him by the hand. Take him by the hand and let him lead you. Because that, that is the only way. That is the only way. He is the only way. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, let us leave here today with the confidence and awareness that we are household members in the house of God. By his abundant grace, with an awareness that we are his purchased possessions. You are a purchased possession more valuable than anything that is in this world that's passing away. And therefore, having been justified, you don't have to turn there, but um, Romans 5, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, you've been justified, justified by faith. Not anything you did. There's nothing we can do. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So just thank him. Thank him for, for where you are now. And you know that where you are now is not the, is not the limit. You know that he's going to take you far. We just have to yield ourselves to him. We have to yield to him. And, uh, you know, this is... I can't pack everything I really wanted to in this one 30-minute uh, segment. So this is going to be a, there's going to be a part two. The part two is now going to focus on the new man. We're in the household of God now, y'all. So who, who are we in the household of God? How do we operate? How are we governed? Who's governing us? Amen? Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. And, uh, and really quickly, I just want to make an altar call. If you haven't received the life of Jesus... And you're still far off, regardless of how how far you think you are, how far gone you are. His hand is still stretched out still. His hand is stretched wherever, even if you're online, God is not limited by time or space. His hand is not too short to reach you wherever you are. No, no matter how far off you are, he can still touch you. He can still, he can redeem you. He can bring you into his household. He can bring you into his household. All you have to do is just... Just believe. Just say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Because you have to make that confession. Father, I believe that you are God. I believe that you died and rose three days later. I believe, Lord Jesus. I believe in you and nothing else. And right now, though you are far off, he can bring you near. You can also be in his household. You can also be his child. Regardless of your background, regardless of how broken your household is, you can be adopted into this new family. You can find purpose. You can find, you can find love. Because his, your purpose can only be manifested in him. And some of us are we're searching for purpose out there, but we have to be in the household of God to find that purpose. That purpose can only manifest in the household of God. So wherever you are, Jesus loves you, and his, redemp his redemptive power is still at work. So just, just believe and let him do the work in you. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the grace and mercy that you show us every single day. The grace and mercy that we do not deserve the grace and mercy we do not deserve because even while we were yet still sinners, Lord Jesus, you died for us. You redeemed us, O oh Lord. We are your purchased possessions, O oh Lord Jesus. We are sealed until the day of redemption, Lord Jesus. And nothing can take us out of your hand. 
You have drawn us to you, Father, and nothing can take us out of your hand, Lord Jesus. Nothing can separate us from your love, Lord Jesus, because you first loved us, Father. Father, help us to love you, O oh Lord Jesus, by doing your will, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, help us, O oh Lord. Help us to be those beacons of light that you have engineered us to be because you engineered us, you know, in our inward parts. You know every part of us, O oh Lord. You are the creator of all things. So if there, if there be any lingering doubt in your value, in who you are, know that that's a lie from the enemy. Know that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. It just begins in the household of God. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord.